Thank you, Father. We are going to dig into the Word tonight, and I'm really excited to be able to come and teach you, and I just um, really count it a privilege to be back here, to be back here, and to have this amazing opportunity to minister to all of you here and those that are online, and I don't take that lightly. Um, we're going to actually, what we're going to be digging into the ni- tonight, and um, I, I want you to be really open-hearted, and I don't want you to even let a thought come to you like, really? Okay. So we are going to talk tonight about why the Bible is important to you. I'm going to say that again. We're going to talk about why the Bible is important to you. And um, I believe that it's really critical for us as Christians to understand how vital the Bible is to us. And so we're going to see some things through the Word of God tonight that I hope you won't just hear, but I, I hope that you'll, that you'll catch. And I hope that if there's any shifting or course changing that needs to be happening in the way you view the Bible, in the things that you've believed about the Bible, that this is going to be a significant night for you and that there'll just be some shifting. So anyway, why is the Bible important? Don't think you know. Let's just dig into the word together. Let's just approach it like we don't know anything. Okay? Like we don't know anything. And let's just look at it. Number one, the Bible is foundational. And we're going to spend just a little bit of time on this one. But I know the guys are going to prop up scriptures. I'm really grateful. Aren't you glad for all the people that come and serve and do cameras and sound and all the stuff? They do ushering, music, everything. So that we can come and gather around God's word and be taught. It's an amazing thing. So Proverbs 14.1 says this. The wise woman builds her house on a foundation. Everybody say foundation. You know, that's kind of like a no-brainer thing. If you're going to build something that's quality and something that will last and endure, it has to have a good, solid foundation. So it says the woman, a wise woman, builds her house on a foundation of godly precepts. You know what that is? The word. It's the Bible. It's scripture. All right. But there's a contrast in this verse. The foolish one who lacks spiritual insight tears it down with her own hands by acknowledging, I'm sorry, by ignoring godly principles. The TLB says it this way, a wise woman builds her house while a foolish woman tears hers down by her own efforts. So the Bible tells us that a wise woman builds her house on a foundation of godly precepts on the Bible. You can't build a foundation on the Bible if you don't know what's in the Bible. If you don't open the Bible, you can't lay a foundation of the Bible in your life. You can be a Christian and have no foundation. So we're throwing out kind of whatever we thought about the Bible. We're going to learn some stuff tonight about the Bible. But it says that because she builds her house on a good foundation of the word, she thrives. Do you want to thrive in life? Do you want to thrive in your family and your relationships? Do you want to thrive in your walk with God? Do you want to thrive in the ministry that God's called you to? Then get the foundation right. And the foundation comes down to scripture. And actually, even though this was talking about women, it, we, can, we know this, that any, any wise builder is going to choose the best materials to build with. And when it comes to a foundation, that just makes sense. And there's nothing better to build your life on than the word of God. 
And we're going to talk tonight about what it looks like to build your life on the word. Okay, to actually build your life on the word. I remember hearing Pastor Lynn tell her testimony when she got delivered from depression and how, um, I I don't know if she heard in her heart to stand on the word or if somebody said to her to stand on the word and she literally took the Bible and stood on it. Because that, that, she's like, okay, (laughs) I'll go with it, right? But I want you to know that we have to have our feet grounded in the word of God. It's our foundation. And you know what? Sadly, there are so many Christians that do not know what is in the Bible. They don't even know. They don't know what's in the Bible. Maybe you don't know what's in the Bible. Maybe some of you watching online don't know what's in the Bible. But you know what? There's a quick remedy to that. Get into the Bible. Okay? Get into the Bible. All right, so um, I believe with my whole heart, I heard Rick Renner say this, and it went off in my heart, but he said, I believe we need a revival of the word, and I do. I believe my, with my whole heart that it's important now that we have this revival of the word because of what God is wanting and must do in these last days through the church. And if we don't have the foundation of the word, we're not going to be able to move with him and flow with him like he wants us to. So scripture is a firm foundation to all who trust in it. God has given us his word. And I just want to say to you, what a gift, what a treasure that God has given to us. He wrote things. This is his word to you and me so that we will know him, so that we will know his will, so that we will know who we are. This is so amazing that the God who created the universe wrote this book to us. And you know what that says to me? He has something to speak to you through this word. Many Christians are saying, I just wish God would speak to me. I just knew, I just wish I knew what God wanted me to do. I wish I knew what the will of God was. And I want you to know God has given us his word because this is the primary way he speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word. All right. There's no substitute for his word. And you know what? God wants us to trust the Bible. He wants to trust in his word. He wants, uh, he wants us to build our lives on it. Or in other words, like um, he wants it to undergird and support us to put all of our confidence and trust in what he said. And you know, you can't trust in it if it's under the bed or on a shelf and not in your heart. Only you can get the word in your heart. You know, you don't get the word in your heart by saying, God, put the word in my heart. Doesn't work that way. You have to put the word in your heart. You know, it's a partnership with God. You have to put the word in your heart. And so I want to say this before we get any further. And you might think, wow, she's really driving this home. Yeah, I really am. (laughs) This is so foundational. And I'm going to tell you this little statement, and that is this. What you believe about the Bible will determine what you do with the Bible and what you can receive from the Bible. Can I say that one more time for you? What you believe about the Bible will determine what you do with the Bible. And what you can receive from the Bible. You know, if you don't believe that the Bible is very relevant. If you don't believe that the Bible is foundational for your life as a Christian. You're not going to be too interested in it. You're probably not going to pick it up. You probably won't read it very much at all. Maybe when you come to church you kind of have to because they pop Scripture's up on the screens, right? You kind of got to read it then. Or maybe if you're super desperate. 
but a wise person builds their life. That's a consistent action on the word of God. What you believe about the Bible will determine what you do with the Bible and also what you can receive from the Bible. If you don't think you can understand it, man, I've heard people say that, I can't understand the Bible. You know what? God has given you the Holy Spirit to help. And he wants you to understand. So anyway, it's foundational. Okay, second reason, because we're looking at, what did I say the title of this was? Yeah, why the Bible is important to you. And that is that the Bible's light, L-I-G-H-T, light. And I love that. The Bible is light. I'm going to say it again. The Bible is light. You know what? When you don't know what to do, when you don't know what the will of God is, when you don't know which direction to go, when you don't know what is right or what is wrong, you need light. That's darkness. When you don't know, that's darkness. But God has given us light. The Bible is light. If you're confused, if you're wandering around wondering, what the heck am I supposed to do? The Bible is light to you. All right? The Bible is important to us because it's the source of life. Psalm 119.105 says this. I love this. Your word is a lamp to my feet, and it's a light to my path. So have you ever experienced a power outage? Anybody ever experienced a power outage? What about a powder, power outage at night? Isn't that trippy, like trying to walk around and it's so dark, like you can't see anything? Nobody in the neighborhood has lights. You can't see anything. And it's like you're groping and you're bumping into things and you can't accomplish much when it's dark like that. You need light. Now imagine spending your whole life like that in darkness. That's what it's like when there's no word. When you remove the word of God from your life, you remove light. When you remove or neglect the word, you are shutting off the light source. Guys, that makes no sense. When light is available, if you're in a power outage and you know that there's a flashlight in the drawer, aren't you going to go for the flashlight or the candle? I think you are. Why? Because you know the light is going to benefit you. It's going to help you. It's going to help you see. The Bible is light. And it's not only a light to our feet, it's a light to our path. God not only wants to enlighten like our present where we are, but he wants to bring us light about what's coming and about what he has for us. You don't get that without the light. It doesn't come to us just any way. Just God give me light. Part of the way God, a major way that God gives us light about our destiny, our purpose, our decision making is through the light of his word. I want you to say this. God's word is my foundation. God's word is light. You don't have to be in darkness. If you're confused, if you're in darkness, turn on the light. You know how you turn on the light? You get into the Bible. That's it. You turn on the light. You get into the Bible. God's word, God's word is light. All right. So let's go on here. All right. I just don't even understand why we would live in darkness when light's available. 
that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. He wants you to take. God wants you to know. If you've had any thoughts or beliefs that maybe God just doesn't want you to know, he's withholding information from you or something, I just want you to know that's not true. God has given you his word that you would know. He has given you his word that you will know. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's own handiwork and his workmanship. We are recreated in Christ Jesus, and we are born anew, that we may do the good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us taking the paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he had prearranged and made ready for us to live. You know, right before service, a very sweet woman here in the congregation said, wow, you, it's amazing, you're back, you know, you've made some really big moves. And we have in our life, but you know what? Every one of those, you know how we could do it? We got light. We got light, not from begging God. We got light from going to the word. Every process, going to the word, reading the word, expecting God to speak to me and show me from the word the way that I'm to go, checking my heart, looking for the witness of the spirit, and knowing that witness of the spirit, this is the way, walk ye in it. That's how. Light, light comes from the word. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, look carefully then to how you walk and live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and the witless, but as wise, sensible, and intelligent people. Make that's what you are, intelligent people. Christians are intelligent people. We know God loves us. We know God's got a plan, and we know that he is eager to show us. And it says, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the day, the days are evil. Therefore, don't be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. How? Through the light. Through the light of God's word. So the Bible was written by God for you. That ought to make you feel pretty special. God wrote the word for you. You know what? The Bible's a gift for you. I love that. God loves us so much that he gave us his word. It's light to us. It's a foundation for us. And he wants us to know his will, and he wants us to navigate our lives with his wisdom and with his light. And you can't do that without the Bible having a place of honor and priority and influence in your life. You know, I think it really merits saying this tonight. Like, if you think this book is like any other book, you are sadly mistaken. There is no book on this planet that compares to the Bible. Not one. Not any other book is God's word to us. And it is foundational and it is full of light. Psalm 119, 130 says, The entrance and the unfolding of your word gives light. Isn't that interesting? The entrance and the unfolding of your word gives your words give light their unfolding gives understanding discernment and comprehension to the s simple 
So light comes where the word of God is welcomed and where it's honored and where it's esteemed. It has to enter into our hearts. It has to get planted in us. God's word has to be esteemed. Now, the Holy Spirit works with the word to unfold scriptures. And you know, um, I was thinking about, gosh, I made one of these just for you guys. And I forgot it and left it in my briefcase in my office. But when I was a little kid, we made these little things out of paper. I think now they're like origami things. And anyway, it was this little folded up thing. And I got to show you, but you put your fingers in it like this. Do you remember that? Okay. Yeah, a what? A cootie catcher. I think it was like a boyfriend, like announcer or something when I was a little kid. So there were little numbers or something written on the outside and you'd say four, one, two, three, four. And then you would open up the little thing. And you know what? When you unfolded it, there was like a little message in there. You know what? God's word is like that. God's word looks like it's just one thing on the surface, but the Holy Spirit works with the word to unfold deeper and deeper meanings and truths to you as you need them. This is why you can read a scripture like one place, one season in your life, and God speaks to you out of that. And in another season, he takes you deeper because there's more to it. God's word is light, and the Holy Spirit unfolds the meaning of that. We'll, we will forever be learning the depths of who God is and his will and, and what he's done for us. Because it's so deep, it's so vast, it's so um, majestic, it's so amazing. This is God's word to us. And I just love it. It's just, it's light. So he just unfolds it to us. All right. God's word is extraordinary. Listen to this. No matter where you are on your spiritual journey, if you're just a brand new Christian, you're a baby Christian, you're like an adolescent Christian or a toddler Christian or a mature Christian, God will speak to you out of scripture right where you are. He will give you the light where you are to feed you. He's amazing. He feeds you in a way that's like digestible to you. He doesn't overwhelm you and dump the whole load on you. I think it might kill us if he like tried to dump the whole load of what is in scripture, but he unloads bits of it to us so that we can embrace it and we can believe it and we can incorporate it into our lives and we can grow from one degree of glory to another. We can't do that without the word. And we can't do that without the spirit. You need the word. You need the word. Your Christian life will never be what God intended without the word being a priority in your life. Having a place of honor and influence. Man, the first place we should go for answers is the Bible. Here's where we go so often. Hey, what do you think we should do? What do you think? Man, I just am wondering, what what do you think? Well, I wonder what this guy has to say. Well, I wonder what they're saying out in the media. I wonder what the answers are that they're... No, the first place we should go, listen, if we're prioritizing and honoring God's word and it's got a place of supreme influence in our lives the first place we go is scripture and you know it's going to take a little bit of digging you might say I don't even know where to go for answers that's why there's a concordance 
That's why there's BibleGateway.com. You can look up scriptures in there. You can look up different versions. And different versions will bring out things. And God will speak to you and bring you light. It's a partnership. It's not just a throw up your hands. Just God show me. And he's like, I'm trying. I've given you my word. I'm directing you. We had a time in our life when we were in Arkansas pastoring, and it was, it was a, it was a challenging time for us, and um, it was a really challenging time for me. And um, I was going to the Lord, and I said, "Lord, I, I feel like I've done everything I know to do." Have you ever been there, yeah. crying to the Lord? I feel like I've done, I've done everything I know to do. Oh my God! What is up to y'all? I was just there, and I cried out my tears, and I got quiet. You know, sometimes you just got to get quiet. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, you've done what you wanted to do. And you know, that's not really what I wanted to hear in that minute. And he led me to listen, he led me into my spirit, came to listen to a teaching by Sister Gloria Copeland. And in that scripture, this is how God spoke to me that, in that scripture, in that uh, teaching, as I'm listening, she was talking about a place in her life and she said to the Lord, I've done everything I know to do. And I'm like so tuned in, like, it's Gloria Copeland. She's where I am. Ben, you know, she's been where I am. Oh, what's the magic cure? You know, what's the magic solution? And she said, the Lord said to me, you haven't done everything that you knew to do. You did everything you wanted to do. And that really spoke to me. And I said to the Lord in that moment, now you have two choices. You can be offended by that. Or you can recognize that God's trying to help and he's lovingly speaking truth to you. And I said, where have I missed it? Where have I missed it? What did I not do because I didn't want to do it? And he showed me and I corrected it and the situation turned around for me. Because God's word is light. He's our helper, and he will do that for you, and he will do that for me. So the Bible gives us God's answers to question. The word and the spirit work together to reveal God's will to us, to show us the way to go. So many Christians say, I wish I knew what God wanted me to do. I wish I knew God's will. I wish I knew that God would lead me, and the primary way he's endeavoring to lead you is through the light of his word. Get into scripture. And I would say this, when you get into the scripture, approach it with faith. So here's what I do in my Bible reading time. These are the adjustments I've made through the years. So there are times in my life, still probably if I'm honest, sometimes in my life where it's tick in the box. I'm reading like, oh, I got to do my Bible reading today and kind of short on time, and I want to make sure I tick my box, you know. But here's the best way to do it. Can I just give you a hint? You don't have to do it, but this has worked for me, so I'm just going to share what's worked for me. I have notebook. I have notebooks. I have a lot of notebooks. And when I read the word, I come this way. I come this way like if I was in a meeting with Pastor Mac and Pastor Mac was saying, Susan, I got some things I want to speak to you about and I want to tell you to do. I got my notepad. I got my pen because he's going to say some things I need to know and I need to remember. That's how I approach my reading of scripture. So I say to the Lord when I go to read, what do you want to say to me today? 
What do I need to hear today? What's going to save my life? What's going to keep me from mistakes? What's going to keep me on the straight paths of the Lord that you have made for me? I'm depending on you to speak to me what I need to know. And when I go to read, even if it's like Chronicles, <laughs> you know, so-and-so, we got so-and-so and all that kind of stuff. You know, when you're reading there, I just, everything I read, I'm like, God, what are you saying to me? What are you speaking to me? And when I get things in my heart, when things go off in my heart, I'm committed like I'm journaling something. I'm writing down something about the scripture verses that I'm reading. What are you saying to me? What's leaping out at me? What do I need to do different? Where do I need to be corrected? What do I need to lay down? What do I need to pick up? The word of God is here to help us. And this comes back to honoring and prioritizing God's word because it wants to be an influence. All right. I'm going to get done. I'm going to do my best to get you out on time. Don't even be concerned, okay? I was slightly concerned when I just looked at my watch, but I will not be concerned. God is going to help me. All right. Here's another thing about why we need the Bible. Why the Bible is important to you. The Bible is the word of God and it is God's will for mankind. Listen, in today's world, like, I think you should write that down and underline it. The Bible is not just a book for Christians. The Bible is God's will for mankind. I will say that one more time. The Bible is not just a book for Christians. It is God's will for mankind. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16 through 17. All scripture. All of it. All scripture. All scripture. Grab hold of that. We don't pick and choose the parts we like and throw out the ones that challenge us. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. I believe that scripture profits my life. Even the hard parts that challenge me to grow and change and lay down things and do the hard things. I believe that scripture profits me. It profits my life. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. That's like strong dealings. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. This is all the things scripture does. You know what? There's a lot of thinking in the world right now that scripture is all about making you just feel good and comfortable. But you know what? You need to be corrected sometimes, and so do I. Scripture is life-saving. It corrects us. It reproves us. Why? Because God loves us, and he wants us to stay in the way of life and blessing. All mankind, this is for all mankind. And it says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's what I want. I want to be complete. 
I want to be thoroughly equipped so that I can do everything that God's called us to do. When we pray over our food, that's what we pray, that we will live long and healthy lives, fulfill the number of our days, and finish what God has called us to do. We pray it every time we pray over our food. That is my belief, that is my com- that's my conviction, and that is what I am believing God for. I put my faith to that. So the Bible stands in a category by itself, and it deserves more honor than any other book. The Bible should be the final word of authority in every matter of life, ministry, and church. The final authority, especially for us as Christians. That's what it should be. It should have that place of honor. If we don't honor the Bible and recognize its worth, we will never give it the place of influence in its life, in our lives that it deserves. A real quick story, Billy Graham, that I heard in a... I don't think it was a documentary or maybe a movie about Billy Graham. I'm a little foggy on it because it's been a while, but I'll try and tell it accurately. If I lie, I hope I'm not trying to. Um, I'm trying to remember it to the best of my ability. But when Billy Graham entered into ministry and he was in the early years of his ministry and there were fellow ministers that began to question the validity of the Bible. And they were talking about it. When they got together in meetings, they were talking about questioning certain things in the Bible. Maybe that's not true. I don't really know that that's true. I'm not sure that that's true. And he said that began, you know, that conversation began to impact me. And he said, I found my footing just gone. And he said, I thought, how can I minister salvation to people with confidence and boldness if I'm not sure that what God said in the Bible is actually true? So you know what he did? Thank God. He didn't just go along with the crowd. He actually went to a solitary place. And he went up in like a kind of a mountain thing. And he had his Bible with him. And he got before the Lord and he talked to the Lord and he got out his Bible and he read his Bible. And here's what he said, profound, and I hope it's profound to you. He said in reading it, he said, I realized I was confronted with a decision. Either I'm going to choose to believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God and it is true or I, will be, or I won't believe that it is. And if I don't believe that it is, I can't continue doing what I'm doing. And he said, I made a decision. Listen to me. Faith begins with a decision. A decision to believe that the Bible is true. And he said, I made a decision that day. God's word is inspired. It is truth. And I believe the Bible. I'm so glad he made that decision. I never knew that about him. What if he'd have gone the other way? Do you know how many people came to Christ because he chose to believe God when others didn't? He believed the word. Faith begins with a decision to believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God and that it is absolute truth. And that brings us to the next reason why the Bible is important to you. And it's this, the Bible is truth. We're going to talk about this and I am going to talk about this before we leave because this is like the clincher thing. The Bible is truth. Psalm 119, 160 says, the entirety of your word is truth. 
and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. John 17, 17 says this, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. You know what? I believe the Bible. If God says his word is truth, then you know what? That's good enough for me. It's truth. What's in it is truth. When we went to Rama, Kevin and I went to Rama um, back in we is 79, 80. We graduated in Amy in 80. We made um, a decision. We were confronted for the first time about making God's word final authority. And you know what? We decided we're doing it. We're believing the Bible. We made a decision to believe that the Bible is truth. And if we're off in some area of our life, God isn't going to change. We have to. We have to. We have to change and align ourselves with what the scripture says. And you know why? Because the Bible is truth. When we believe that, the, that God's word is truth, we will act on it. And when we act on it, it actually sanctifies us. It sets us apart in the world that's around us. We, um, it causes us to think, to live, to make decisions, to speak, and to believe different than we did before. That's what truth does. I'm so glad. I don't want to be like the old man. I don't even want to keep being like I am right now. I want to grow from here. I have a lot of growing to do. And I want to keep growing. You know, our values are different than the world. Our attitudes are different than the world. Our love is different than the world. As we conform more and more to scripture, we shine as bright lights in the world. And that's what God wants and needs us to do, that's like our job to shine Jesus to the world, not to condemn the world, to compel the world to come to God. They should see the goodness and the love of God in our lives. The quality of life in our lives should draw them to the word of God. All right, next the Bible should be our final authority. We're all building our lives on something, and every decision we make, every path we choose, you know what? It's the result of what we believe. Every decision we make is a result of what we believe. And you know what? Make a decision. If you haven't already, make a decision to believe God, to believe his word to believe him. This is kind of like challenging. Is this challenging word tonight? Are you guys here? Hello? Are you guys tuning me out already? It's not time to go home yet. Is this a challenging word? Yeah, it is kind of, isn't it? Reminding me of things today. And I see in my life... Um, just some things that, you know, it's easy to let go of things. You let go of things when you're not doing things you should be doing. Not applying the word where we should be applying. All right. Oh, <clears throat> where do I need to go here? I want to encourage you to be aware um, and to be, um, to be aware. To be aware and to beware of the leaven that's in the world. You know, um, that scripture came up in my heart the other day about Jesus talking about the Pharisees. And he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. You remember that? And I'm like, you know, I kind of like, I kind of think I know what that is. But I looked it up a little bit because in my heart I felt like there was more, you know. And I looked up what a rabbi, I think it was a rabbi guy, wrote about leaven, and he said this. He said, you know, bread in its truest form is flat bread. It has no leaven. When the leaven goes in, 
to the ingredients that make up the bread, do you know that leaven changes the constitution of those ingredients? You know what leaven does when it comes into the church? The leaven of false doctrine or the leaven of worldly ideology, which is super anti-biblical truth right now, super Super anti-biblical truth. When the leaven of that comes into the church, it compromises the integrity of who you are. It changes the constitution of who you are. Beware of the leaven that's out there. Embrace the word. Just go with the truth of the word. Enough said about that. The Bible, why is the Bible important? Because the Bible has transforming power. And we know the scripture, Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Here's what we're supposed to do. Present our bodies to the Lord. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to serve in church? What do you want me to do with my life? What do you want my words to be? What do you want my attitudes? Everything that we're, we're to serve God with our bodies. But if we don't transform our minds by renewing them to the word of God, it's going to be really challenging and difficult and nearly impossible for us to present our bodies to the Lord. We need the transforming power of the word of God. Nothing can change your beliefs, your attitudes, your conduct like the word of God can. It's just like in a class by itself. It is so powerful. It is the only thing that can change your beliefs. It can change your mind. And our minds need to be changed. We have very often worldly mindsets. We do. And we don't even realize it till we get into scripture and we're confronted with something and we go, whoa, I'm not doing that. I'm not living like that. I'm not thinking like that. I need to change. That's the value of God's word. It transforms us. All right. So much more I could say. Um, lastly, I want to encourage you to hold fast to the truth. Well, not quite lastly, but mostly lastly. Second Timothy 1.13 says, hold fast and follow the pattern of wholesome and sound teaching. And you know what? The whole essence of this scripture, you would not be told to hold on to something tightly unless there was going to be pressure coming for you to release it. We live in a world where there is a lot of pressure to compromise, oh, let me use the word, negotiate. Negotiate. Make what we believe as Christians a little more palatable. No. No. We're to speak the truth in love, but we're to speak the truth. We're not to negotiate or dumb down the gospel. The Bible is truth. It is truth. And let me tell you something. Truth is not bad. Truth sets people free. People can't be set free by a watered-down compromised gospel. They are set free by the truth of the word. All right? All right. Now, the last thing that we're going to say here, and we got to finish here. Oh, I'm actually doing really good. Finishing like right on time. Thank you for your support. <laughs> I want to encourage you about your daily feeding on the word. And um, I just encourage you, you know, I don't know what your normal like physical eating habits are, but when it comes to the word, Eat big meals and snack all you want. You can't do that in the natural, but you can do it with the word. 
eat every meal and snack often. Snack often. Make your lifestyle a lifestyle of continuous feeding. You know how, like, if you're at home, maybe you graze, like, what's in the fridge? You already know what's in the fridge because you've looked in the fridge, like, 15 times. Nothing's changed in the last 15 times you've been there, but you still graze. But I encourage you, go to the Word and find ways that you can incorporate feeding into your lifestyle. Maybe it's when you're getting ready. Find a good teaching series that you're going to listen to. Listen to the sermon that you heard on the weekend over again. Listen to this teaching again. While you're getting ready, while you're fixing your hair, while you're doing the dishes, guys, when you're cleaning the garage, when you're out mowing the grass, put those little ear things on and listen to the word. Snack. Feed. Make it a lifestyle of feeding, a lifestyle of feeding. And then make sure you have that set aside time with the Lord. And like I said before, man, um, come with faith and expectation in your heart. Get your notebook, get ready to hear, write down things, make it your goal to write down things that you're getting from the Lord every day. And along those same lines, like, um, turn off the distractions. I know, like, you, you're going to make this commitment to get up a little earlier, and of all days, the kids are going to get up early. I know how that happens. Don't be discouraged. Keep after it, right? Keep after it. But make a decision that you're going to feed on the Word every single day. And man, start with something that you know you can, I would say that you know you can do and achieve because it's going to fuel you every time you have success. You know, if you set the goal really high and you miss the mark, you might get discouraged and want to quit. So it's okay. Start small. You can always increase, but make it your goal. And if it helps you to do a Bible reading plan, there's tons of them out there, like just to give you something to go off of. And then just follow the little Holy Ghost trails you get in your heart. But prioritize God's word. God's word is important to you for so many reasons. It's your foundation. It's your light. It's your final authority. It's truth. It's all the other things that I mentioned that I can't remember right now. The points I made. But you know what? God's word, there's nothing like God's word. I want us just to stand as we close tonight. And if you're at home, um, you know, you're watching online or maybe you're working. Those of you here, just stand up. And let's just do something tonight. Let's just consecrate ourselves. Can we do that tonight? We just need a call to action. What are we going to do with this? Are we going to go back to just, you know, normal? Or are we going to make some changes? You know, if we're going to incorporate Bible reading into our lives, I would say this, you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. It's not just going to happen by magic. So where are you going to fit that in? What are you going to do different? What time of day are you going to fit that in? You got to plan a little bit, but then I love this, make an appointment with God. Don't you, if you make a breakfast appointment with somebody, we met Karen for breakfast one time. And you know what? Like, it's on my calendar. I got to be there. How bad is that to make an appointment and not show up? Make an appointment with God. God, this is your time, and I'm all ears. You have my heart. You have my attention. What do you want to say? What do you want to do in me? So, Father, right now, we lift our hands to you. We are your people. We are called by your name. You've done so much for us. You've bought us with a price that was so costly to you and so amazing for us. Father, we're making a decision to believe 
Your word is inspired. Your word is truth. Your word is your will to us. And we're making a decision to exalt your word in our lives, to lift it up to this place of priority and influence in our lives. To make it first place. To make it final authority. If that's what you say, we're going to believe it and we're going to act on it. And we're going to embrace it. We make a decision tonight to make room for you in our lives. To put your word first. <coughs> so Father... Just help us. Help us to clear our calendar, to rearrange our day, because you're wanting light to get to us. You're wanting to speak to us. We put you first. We thank you for your help. And we look forward to all the wonderful things that you're going to speak to our hearts, that you're going to show us, that you're going to do in us. Because your word changes us. And we thank you and praise you for that in advance. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Now before you go, turn to somebody and say, I really, really meant that. Look them in the eyes and say, I remember your face. Right? I really, really, really meant that. All right, I'm going to dismiss people online. Thank you for joining us. For all of you that came tonight, thank you so much for coming. Um, I just believe this word, my prayer, is that this word will go with you, and the Holy Spirit will just bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. It's a revival of the word, right? Praise God. We need that. We need that. All right, we love you, and we're dismissing. We have altar counselors, and I'll be here up to if um, up here too. If anybody needs prayer for anything, please come forward before you go. Okay. All right. Blessings. <laughs>